is a divine being says the comedic religion but the early part of man's life is dominated by the human faculties and limitations the essential focus of the ancient egyptian religion is then the transcendence of the human stage and the realization of the true and final state the divine nature Divinity is realized by adherence to divine laws and it confers upon man access to divine or superhuman abilities the elevation of her mental abilities and talents and qualifies her to enter into a partnership with God Meduna Ter volume 6 by Ra Un Nefer Amen
which Kemet was able to bring forth the men and women from all walks of life who were responsible for its superlative civilization. Unparalleled to this day. You are divine. In the comedic tradition, we say Juan Ater, we give thanks to God. Peace and blessings. Hetepu and Nefer Hebnen to you. That means a beautiful time of stillness, a time of reflection, a time to go within, a time to renew ourselves in our connection with the creator. My name is M. Tehuti Kamo. I'm the Orwa of, one of the Orwa U of the Osar Oset Society, a Pan-African spiritual organization founded in 1973 by His Royal Majesty, Dr. Ra'un Nefer Amen, known as the Shechem or Shechem, author of the seven volume Medunatair series and 33 other books, as well as composer of over a hundred musical tracks, compositions for meditation, for meditation to reconnect with God, for meditation to, get, to gain divine insight, for meditation to arouse the powers within your spirit to meet the adversities of life, for meditations to heal and balance out the meridians in your organ energy systems for meditations to evoke the angelic powers of your spirit that God has sent with you to earth in order to meet the challenges of life. What we call Father Geb in the comedic tradition is not Mother Earth. The mother is heaven, Newt. Geb is the stern father that is here for us to serve as the proving ground for our divinity, to see if we can be on earth as we essentially are in heaven. The winter solstice is the beginning of a time of reflection, a time of contemplation, a time of reconnection, a time of atonement for our failures. And remember that the word atonement means at one mint, meaning to reestablish our oneness with God that's easy to lose track of in the turmoil of our earthly lives. It's a time when we take 21 days to meditate, 21 days to reflect on our uh, divination, to reflect on our revelations, to reflect on wise counsel, to study wise scripture and to look at our lives to reassess where we are and what we need to change about ourselves because it certainly is true that the greatest obstacles that we face in life are in the person that's looking at us in the mirror every day right so we need to grow we need to change we need to evolve and that's what the winter solstice is all about 
So we're here on the third day of the winter solstice of 2022, contemplating what type of life we're going to have in 2023 and beyond. And with the assistance of the great sage, we have a program for you uh, that will take you every step of the way, every step of the way through the 11 laws of the spirit, every step of the way through the tree of life or the Pauk Netaru to examine yourself, to do the great Uchao Madu, the weighing of the words, the weighing of the heart. This was our ancestral ritual. And it wasn't just done uh, when you pass out of this physical existence and, ju and are judged. It was a ritual observance that was done every year at this time of year, right? The ultimate assessment. So a lot of us set goals for the year, you know? We wanna accomplish something this year. We wanna improve our career. We wanna improve our marriage. We wanna make more money. We wanna start a business. Uh, we wanna go back to school. You know, those are goals. But the winter solstice is really about aspirations. Aspirations means who is it that's going to improve the business? Who is it that's functioning in the marriage? Who are you going to become to further your education? And in order to change the who, you have to make a resolution, which is the crumbs that have fallen from the ancient table of our ancestors, millions of people, billions of people maybe, on uh, January 30, uh, December 31st, will make a New Year's resolution. But by then it's too late, and it's also ineffective for most people because that resolution cannot overcome your human and animal-based self-image. So you heard in the song, you are divine, you're a God being, you're made in the likeness of God with the expectation that every year of your life, you will improve yourself closer and closer and closer to that divine image in your performance in life. That's what the Uchao, the weighing of the heart, the weighing of your words, meaning the weighing of the ideas that represent your dominant pattern of thinking every day. Who do you think you are? What kind of thoughts do you accept that demean your capabilities? What kind of thoughts do you accept about life that are full of illusions? Or as our ancestors in Indus Kush said, Maya, words that have no objective reality, like this is stressful, this is difficult, this is hard. That's not really a reality because stress is a reaction, it's a response and we can and we must cultivate the God response to the challenges of life, not the human response. That is our capability. And if you've ever said in a very difficult moment, it's not humanly capable for me to deal with this, you're absolutely right. Because human beings by our nature are not capable. But you weren't made in the likeness of a human being. You were made in the likeness of a divine being which means you have the potential to give the God response to every challenge that you face in life. And you have to think about that potential. Like I would say to you, you have the potential to run a marathon. And you might say, I can't even make it around a block without huffing and puffing. Well, what happens if you train and you train and you train and you work and you're consistent? One day you will run a marathon. So running a marathon is not stressful, difficult, or impossible. It's something you have to train for. And unfortunately, in Western culture, we haven't been taught that life is something that you have to train for. You have to cultivate. You're going to have your hits. You're going to take losses. You're going to take big gains, too. And gains can be as entrapping as losses. So you have to train in order to achieve happiness, satisfaction, and that can only happen with the presence of God. So I want to welcome you to the Tawi Winter Solstice On Demand streaming course. You can get it for $49 at 
TowieSolstice.com. One time fee of forty nine dollars. And you're going to have hours of material to work with, to meditate with, guided meditation, instruction. And we will be coming back together periodically for those of you that take the course, you know, for you to get feedback, for you to ask questions, for you to join into um, a, a, a cadre, join into a cohort of of those of us that are striving. You know, it's the striving that counts. It's the striving that counts. So one of the things that we need to do to strive is to be inspired, right? And today we're gonna spend a few moments with the creators of an album of solstice music. So I wanna play a track for you before we uh, ask them to come onto the stage have you check out this beautiful solstice music.
wherever. Peace is your I can't hear anything. Can you hear you. Sorry, I can't hear anything that you're saying. So I may have to call the phone. All right. In order to hear. That was powerful. We can hear you, Queen Mother. I want to welcome to our solstice event. I want to welcome to our solstice event. We're watching the restaurant comment. Can you hear me? You can hear the phone ringing. <laughs> we can hear you. You can hear that. And Shechem Amakaru, how's your sound going? So far, so good. Odawad, right. I can hear you well. I hear you well. Uh, we'll try to get Odawad's uh, sound working here. Uh, if you can hear me, I couldn't talk to you on the phone. We're getting an echo. We can hear you talking to me on the phone. So your voice is coming across. I'm not sure why you're not hearing um, the broadcast. Maybe your sound on your computer needs to be turned up or something. So I hear you now. Uh, there you are. Yes, I can hear you now. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. So what a great sound. I'm telling you, <laughs> so inspiring, right? So I want to welcome uh, two very special people here. Okay, we got that right. This is Ordawad and Enchasra in Kemet. She is a senior priestess of the Osarian tradition, the Osarset Society. She is one of the queen mothers, a paramount queen mother, running our Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Bermuda, and Canada communities, part of the powerful Encamet too, Encamet family. So welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dwa'u. I'm very, very uh, appreciative of your uh, major effort to make sure that people are informed, well-informed and aware 
of the winter solstice and its importance in our lives. I happened to Google winter solstice yesterday and there's all kinds of stuff online that's just kind of very different from what <laughs> I'm used to with regards to the solstice. I'm not going to judge, put, put a judgment on it, but I'm like people that don't look like our ancestors are saying all kinds of stuff and doing all kinds of stuff. And right. I guess people are following them. So we need to, gather the wagons, circle the wagons around one another and promote our ancient African tradition because if we don't, no one else will. Absolutely. Well, Odawad, I want to give you a minute to um, really fully introduce yourself once we introduce uh, Shechem Amakaru, um, just briefly. So from Chicago, we have Shechem Amakaru. Shechem means he's one of our chiefs, one of our leaders, part of the leadership of our organization. Our organization is 49 years old because it's been organized around the principle of African kingship and queen mothership. We use our tradition to organize ourselves around the world, and it has proven as a model of stability. Um, and it's based on the character of people in those positions, uh, its utmost. And of course, our divination system is key in how we move forward uh, with that. Let me just remove this. So uh, welcome, Shechem um, Amakaru. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Erdogan. Anetra. Anetra, Erdogan, and then Chai's Ryan Comet. Rocket to Pleasure to see you. So I'm going to let the Queen Mother start. And, um, you know, people are, are wondering, people are exploring all, all types of spirituality, as you know. And um, you've been at this for quite a while. So I want you to give people a little bit of your history. And, and I couldn't properly introduce you. You, you, you are a, prof a professional. Uh, you have a full career. You're uh, uh, a big time family person, <laughs> you know, mother, um, not only mother to your own uh, biological children, but mother to many other children. Um, and you have been in stool as a queen mother in the Osirian tradition. Your queen mothership has been recognized in West Africa as well, um, where you have taken many trips and have established relationships there. And uh, you play a principal role in the healing ceremonies uh, of the community, particularly with our, our women uh, and so many other things. So I would like you to take a moment because it's very important for people to understand the success that you've had in your life, the respect that you've had earned in your life and the great works that you've accomplished and how that's related to the spiritual work that you have done on your person. Oof. <laughs> that's a lot to cover. Um, and I don't want to take up too much time, but I was introduced to the Osiriset Society in 1975. And at that time, I had a five-month-old child who um, was going to, was pretty much my responsibility because his father had already transitioned. And I knew that his father and I had planned that we would, you know, pursue spiritual, uh, a spiritual way of life. And of course, I didn't really necessarily know what that meant, but I was in college during the 70s, you know, Black Power Movement. I actually was right outside of Chicago when Fred Hampton was killed. Mm -hmm. And that was a, you know, a big, big deal, you know, in terms of the types of things that Black people needed to really look at and, and review about us and ourselves. I know at the school I was at, they changed the uh, name of the Black Student Union from Black Students for Black Action to African Students for African Liberation. And that was my senior year. And then I had a bit of a metamorphosis at that time, which said to me that, you know, living a Western life is not going to get you closer to your African identity. And so as time evolved, the spiritual identity became what was most important, but that just was a der derivative of what our African ancestors 
practice and everything was uh, related to their spiritual identity and self divine self image, which in our tradition is Osir. So again, back in 73, I had that thought that my person wanted, didn't want to live as a Western, you know, just just the okie doke Western way of living. And I w had the opportunity to attend a class um, in 1975 here in Washington, DC. And that started my journey with Osero Set Society. And, you know, of course we started doing the solstice way back when, and mm -hmm. we were given this important information about this very important time of year there's so many successes. I know of people having just even mundane successes, success with health, success with, you know, their employment, their career, you know, which I've also had those types of successes just by taking the time over this time to make sure that you're putting what you need into your mind, that you're putting certain spiritual laws into your mind and that you are taking the time to reflect and observe. And it's just wonderful that Shechem or Shechem is now, you know, encouraging and promoting the 21 day meditation in order to solidify <coughs> what we need to do, excuse me, <coughs> to solidify what we need to do <coughs> over the next six weeks or so in order to, you know, just really imprint and impress on our spirit the laws that we want to observe. And I just must say something about this particular song, Solstice, it's the Solstice. I am greatly, greatly indebted to Ankara Amenhotep. Uh, my person had the lyrics for this song in mind, but it wasn't until I teamed up with him that this product, this finished, I don't even want to call it a product, this finished metamorphosis of, you know, just spiritual uh, energy came forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm greatly indebted to him for, you know, doing the musical score and coming, yeah. up, with the, coming up with the arrangement. Right, and, and, to, and, for those, and for those of you who don't know, Ankh Ra Amenhotep, is the artist that you heard when you uh, when we opened up the broadcast singing uh, Higher Consciousness, just one of many powerful, inspiring songs on his Higher Consciousness album. Mm -hmm. And also I Am Divine, he's the lead singer on that as well. So uh, shout out to our brother Ankara Amen Hetep. Yes, please, please, we have to give him his due. And so basically, you know, just from doing the solstice, my person was motivated and inspired to write the lyrics. And to uh, my person really wanted to make more people aware of the solstice. So actually this song, um, the instrumental and some prose that I wrote, which also was inspired by the solstice was on a Kwanzaa CD initially because everybody, a lot of black people are into Kwanzaa. So I said, let me throw some solstice in there so they can get some <laughs> messaging. Mm -hmm. And so originally it was on a Kwanzaa CD. But fast forward to where we are now. And Shekhar Ahmad Karu, I have to give him his props because my person went to him to actually collaborate with another one of our chiefs in New York who has a song that is just tremendous lyrics to the song, but because it's a popular song, they have to get the rights to the music. So we weren't able to do that this time, but it's coming. So again, the whole purpose of this is to make people more aware of the solstice and to get them the proper information through the platform such as Tawi so that they can observe the solstice and change behaviors that they feel need to be changed and, and, and create success that they so, so badly need. So mm. Shekhar Mamakaru, 
he was able to put all together. He knew he knows all the tech in terms of putting it up on um, different platforms. And one of my daughters told me today that she had been listening to it. She and I didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it is powerful and and. Uh... Queen Mother, with all of your success as a medical profession, professional, as a parent, as a grandparent, as a spiritual uh, leader, and uh, all the other things you do, I didn't know that you had such an incredible voice as well. So that was Ottawat singing on that track. And I want to just play, uh, before we hear from Shekhar Mamakaru, a little bit of this solstice poem. Not just me, a Mormon coom. Too. I have to give her her props as well. Yes. So we have uh, on the album up here, um, I don't see her listed. So we have Ankara Menetep, your person, Esun the jeweler, and Tutner Muf or Steth Seker. Yeah, Tutner um is a mu uh, not just a musician, Rod Powell. He did the Kuji Chagalia song at the end. Uh -huh. All right. So let's listen to a little bit of this. A solstice experience. experience from the inner plane came a tale of the enlightened ones, a message to receive and to act upon. The ancient comedic way of life shows a world without suffering, a world without strife. My ancestors shared a plan and means to know how my spirit must be cultivated in order to grow. When I came in, I was free of sin. Now I will to go out sin free without a doubt. From heaven I came to heaven I'll return. While here on earth, the divine way I must learn. My automatic response to every challenge must be peace. Thus my frontal lobe energy needs to be increased. Tratakam, home breathing, yoga, qigong, and the like strengthen my breath, life force, and third eye psychic might. To ensure my might is used to only defeat Heru the blind, Ma'at's 11 laws must be planted, rooted in my mind. How do my thoughts measure against the 11 laws? seeking to discover and transcend all my flaws. As I meditate to consummate the union of the seen and the seen, my life begins to reflect the divine essence of my being. As I declare not have I over and over again, full reign over emotions is the great victory I win. My covenant with God I do make and keep that the power of God's spirit I may reap. Through so beautiful. I do, my con so you're going to have definitely solstice inspired. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to buy that to, to hear the rest of it. And uh, we're putting the link in the comments. And uh, oh boy, we had a lot of fire in the uh, in the chat here. People loving, loving the loving the uh, the music and the poetry. And I want to bring forward now. Shekham Makaru, was that your, uh, was that you in the background, the beautiful music? Oh, no, no, no. You know, all of that music that you heard um, uh, throughout, that, that you will hear throughout this whole album when you purchase it, it all was arranged and performed by Ankara Minatep. Um, and... Um, you know, his ability to bring forth the spiritual side of the music um, and to find just the right notes, you know, as a musician, um, my perception is that, you know, the, the notes that he selected to use on the piano and the way that, that he uses the piano to complement the, the poetry and the music. And he also did the vocal arrangements. So a masterful musician and we're just a, a, really a treat to be able to uh, be associated in this way with his work. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that we, we, we know from many performances and compositions that you are a very accomplished musician. And can you share with us a little bit about your background and um, 
the importance of the solstice and the comedic system of meditation that you've been exposed to? Well, I have uh, came to a, uh, a health workshop, a health fair at Itango Food Store in Chicago, uh, 79th and Ingleside in 1989. And Shekhar Mushekhar Ramon Efra was there uh, speaking. Um, and, um, you know, uh, there were health consultations going on. And that was the first time that I had a, an opportunity to hear him speak and being exposed to... Uh, to the Osara Set Society. But the one thing that impressed me about him, again, as a, someone who's been on stage, you know, uh, I know that stage fright is a, is a very common occurrence among many artists. Um, and to sit there and watch Shechem or Shechem speak for nearly three hours, of course, I don't know now that his lectures really go that long, but you all know that in the old days, he could, he could go that long and stop, get a drink of water and come back and talk some more. And you'd be hungry for every drop too. Right, and you'd be <laughs> hanging on each word, right? All the way to the end. But mm -hmm. without a single note, not any, he, there were no, he had no notepads or anything. He just spoke and did not break a sweat. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was, that was it for me. I would say, this is, I'm in the presence of someone very special here. Mm -hmm. But um, then to understand what he's really done and really brought to the world um, through the Osara Set Society way of life and the benefits uh, that have, that my, that I've experienced in health, uh, occupation. I taught, uh, music for Chicago public schools for 20 years. And uh, that might not seem like a big deal to, to a lot of people, but for the reason why I mentioned it is because I, when I first started teaching, I did not do very well as a teacher. Um, uh, sometimes the kids in the schools can be a little bit rough. And it was uh, it took me a while to kind of get a, get the hang of how to work with them. But what really made made it possible for me to turn the corner was listening to Shechem or Shechem's lecture and reading his books, Maduna Ter, uh, and his other books and understanding that there there's 11 laws that are always in effect, no matter what the situation is, no matter where you are, no matter whose presence you're in. So I found that in working with the children, I could stand in front of these children and literally count to 10. And with each count, I could mentally recite one of the laws. And by the time I got to the end, I had recited all 10, recited 10 or 11 laws. And it was amazing, the miraculous change and effect that it had on me as a teacher and on my students. But getting back to this album, um, the, um, the main thing I think that uh, allowed me to fall into this role was that I've always had questions about music during the quote unquote holiday season. Um, and how it's used. And it's always been a little bit of a frustration for me to go into the store and go shopping and hear the same songs over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and begin to wonder what are we actually programming ourselves? Because you know, music is a programming tool mm -hmm. uh, as our ancient ancestors knew very well. And I'm so glad that you mentioned about Shechem or Shechem writing music for meditation because that's, the, that's one of the big lessons, because there's a lot of musicians in Osiris that very good musicians. Uh, and, and I think one of the things that has gravitated all of this talent to Osiris that is Shechem Shechem's teaching about the function and the purpose of music and how to use music to help people actually improve their lives. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the solstice time was always an, a, a very special uh you know, that point always was a big point for, for, for me of, of the music, uh, you know, looking forward to a day when music would actually not, you know, when it would actually have more of an important meaning 
for people, for, for the whole world, in fact. Mm -hmm. So if you're just um, joining us, we are speaking with Shechem Amak Haru of the Asarset Society in Chicago, as well as our Queen Mother, Odawada Ninchas Ron Kamet from the DC, Maryland, Virginia, Canada, Bermuda regions of the Asarset Society. Both of them have uh, a number of decades of experience in the African uh, culture, uh, committed spiritual culture that has been practiced as a way of life. And we give thanks to the founder, uh, Ra Unefer Amen, who made the statement that if African culture and spirituality and history and all that is so great, why aren't we living it? And he has dedicated his life to providing a vehicle through which people can actually put these teachings into practice. And the winter solstice is one of the critical times of year. So if you haven't already enrolled, you want to make your way over to Taui Solstice. That's spelled T-A-U-I, Taui Solstice.com, where you can enroll for just $49 uh, in our program. And you can start tonight. We have the Hekau, the mantras. Uh, we have the guided meditations. And most importantly, we start with the the cosmogony, the spiritual instruction that helps to elucidate exactly uh, what is the goal of meditation. So from the comedic spiritual standpoint, um, our ancestors left us a full description of the God man and the God woman. Yes, over 5,000 years ago, we have the uh, biographies of women as well as men of uh, everyday people, you know, the racist uh, uh, Egyptologists will try to tell you, oh, you know, this was all about, you know, the divine kingship, the king was a god, and everybody else was a peon, you know, uh, worshiping the king as a god. But if you look at the actual records, in fact, one of the most popular ones, the papyrus of Ani, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Ani was actually a, uh, what would be an accountant today. He wasn't a king. And then we have the biographies of women of all stations in life, also uh, referred to as en oser at the end of their life, refer, re, be, becoming one of our holy and revered ancestors and spoken of as an oser. So oser is not a God to be worshiped. Oser is the God consciousness within man that once you fully develop it and identify and unify and become one with the Supreme being, then you live a saintly divine life. And the ancestors from Kemet recognize that we are not finished evolving. Uh, and that's pretty clear, right? I mean, with all the intellect and technological capabilities, human beings are on the verge of destroying the planet and destroying each other. So what's up with that? We must be still evolving. So the Homo sapiens sapien is not the end product of evolution. It is a stage of evolution, and we are to evolve into the divine vehicles uh, that we were made to be. So our ancestors had scriptures, religious documents, and we give thanks and praise to uh, Shechem Shechem Unas, who was one, one of the first pyramids to actually record these holy writings and etch it in stone so that we, some 3,000 years later, are able to actually read their words. And they gave the world the concept of the final judgment. That concept came from the Africans in the Nile Valley. They gave the world the concept of, uh, of weighing the heart. So when you walk around and say, I've got something on my heart that I have to, I've got to get something off my chest, or I did it with a light heart, that these are the words of your ancestors. And they established that godliness, not magical power, was the evidence of your divinity. And they had a long, long, long laundry list that most of us would not be able to check off as to the things that you would have to be able to say that you have resisted in your earthly life in order to give evidence of your divinity and take your seat among your brothers and sisters, the divine beings. So uh, the solstice is about that time. 
when we come together, rededicate ourselves. We look back at our performance over the past year and we look forward to the next year. And our goals are not uh, goals, they're aspirations. It's who are we gonna become in the coming 12 months? Who are we gonna manifest? Who are we gonna bring to this earth? Because after all, that's the only thing we're taking with us when we leave. So ancestral magic. Um, you know, Odawad and Enchas Ra, uh, that, that's a very special title, especially for us, because one of the things that uh, people have accused our ancestors of, and even current day Africans, is ancestral worship, you know? And, uh, you know, we, we have this, we just came through the, the, uh, the Halloween, you know? <laughs> <laughs> where they have, de de, you know, defiled uh, what was a holy time, a recognition that this was a time when we are close to the ancestors, you know, uh, into a, you know, masquerade of horrible things, you know. Um, and then they'll say about our ancestors that we were so, so ignorant, you know. Our ancestors built the greatest monuments in the world and did it on scientific mathematical principles. And with all this accomplishment that the only eight of the eight wonders of the world still standing is, is the ones that's made by African hands, they want to make us believe that we were so stupid, we were so backward, so in, in ignorant and primitive that we put all our belongings in our tomb because we thought we were going to come back into the earth. And <laughs> <forget>. <laughs> yeah, they come up with all that stuff, but yet and still they believe in guardian angels. Mm-hmm. They have whole shows and movies about guardian angels. Right. So what's then how can they talk about ancestors if if it's just it's really our ancestors are the ones whose shoulders upon which we stand and who stand guard for us to make sure that you know their legacy is worthwhile. And we have to value that. It's up mm -hmm. to us to value it. But they put it there in front of us to, you know, as an exa as examples for us to follow. Mm -hmm. So if you can make, you know, monuments to Robert E. Lee and George Washington and all these people, why would you talk about people who, Africans who give respect to their ancestral heritage and give respect to all of the divine principles that our ancestors exemplified. Right. And the ancestral, the technology of ancestral communication, because as we've experienced, uh, and many people experience this, not just in Osiris set, just not even being religious, um, the evidence of life after life is the fact that our ancestors communicate with us, whether it's our aunt, our grandmother, came to us in a dream. And as people who have meditated for many, many years, we've all had, had very lucid experiences like that that go even back before generations that we you know, can identify, right? Two, that's, that's definitely correct. So, so ancestor magic is there's something, something deep behind that title, I would suspect. Ancestors magic is that our ancestors knew the solstice they this that, that that you can use this time to create a wonderful and productive life for yourself in the coming months and year and so if you can transform from one thing to another that's magical Mm -hmm. transformation mm -hmm. that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about and so the ancestors knew the time that was most propitious for this to happen so mm -hmm. that's their magical contribution so if you're on uh, Facebook uh, we see a lot of you speaking out on Facebook we have uh, brother Milton's on there Chris Vicky Sarasat West Coast is in the house Arishad, Brother Kofi, 
and Tepu, and Ernest, of course, the ever-present <laughs> that leaves in the house. So, uh, yeah, if you have a comment or, or a question, uh, we're going to be winding down shortly, but uh, feel free to post it, and we will uh, bring forth a uh, question for our guests. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about other tracks on the uh, production? I'm going to defer to Shekha Mamakaru, please. Well, um, I, I, there is, uh, before I say that, and before I forget, I, I do want to say, though, Erdogan, Amtu uh, Kamo, what you're doing is, um, it, it's a dream come true, I think, for so many people to actually see uh, a celebration that we've been involved in for so many decades and years to actually now being brought forth to the general public and being made available. So I just wanted to add my personal gratitude and thank you for that. All thanks to our great leader, uh, Shechem Shechem, who has recognized the time and our ancestors that have brought forth this new platform. Um, now we have the ability to deliver this information this practice on demand immediately. You sign up and you get an email, you log in and you're right there, you know, getting firsthand uh, the words, the lecture, the uh, meditation material and so forth, the guided meditation. So it's a wonderful thing. Right. And, it's, it, and I just want to say that the uh, modules are, you know, succinct, direct to the point. It's, you know, not, it's complex, but it's not difficult to understand and, and work with and move on. So, you know, I just encourage everybody to do, even though we've been doing this for a long time, it's information we want to hear again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's ever fresh, right? <laughs> it's always fresh. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing, because as you move through your experience, you're looking at it from different perspectives. And uh, Shechem Makaru, one of the things you said about your first encounter with Shechem Shechem, Rat Unefra Men, I have to echo because I was a student and uh, at U Penn, and um, I had an elective, and I wanted to study, you know, I wanted to learn about ancient Egypt, and I went to the. In those days, you went to the office, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't sign up online, and um, you know, I'm looking in the book under African Studies Department, and it's not there. So I said to the person like, um, what, you know, where, where's the, where's the e ancient Egypt? He said, oh, um, that's in the Oriental Studies Department. I said, well, when did Egypt move to the Orient? <laughs> <laughs> this is right. at the University of Pennsylvania. This is, you know, like, right. wow. So uh, when I, that summer had a chance to observe a lecture, being a college student and seeing professors and being in classes and stuff, I had the same impression. I was like, he doesn't have any notes. And then next week he didn't have any notes. And for 40 years, I've never seen him refer to a note. For referred to notes. And he's dovetailing into information from medical things, homeopathy, herbology, nutritional science, no. astrology, African spirituality, modern science, you know, like one thing to another thing. And I said, wow, there's really an amazing genius here. But the beauty of it is that um, he he is his message is that this is everybody's capability. Right. Mm -hmm. And that uh, he achieved that through many, many years of, of, of spiritual discipline and meditation and that we also, you know, can awaken our genius you know, to, to a degree uh, as he has. So that's, that, that's such an interesting point, Erdogan, of, of, of that, that the ability and the capability is within each person because we know that the traditional quote-unquote Christmas story, holiday story as we hear it, has to do with an individual being born, but, but the understanding now uh, through Shechem or Shechem's teachings is that the rebirth, you know, when, when you say the birthday of the king, well, the king that's being reborn is you mm -hmm. inside of you. And right. it, it, it has nothing to do with race, religion or anything. Uh, it, it just has to do with if you were if you're alive on this earth and you were born as a human being, you have the capability of living as a divine being. 
And uh, that's just such a marvelous and wonderful message to bring to the world. You know, and I, I am thankful to these musicians who, who I, I'm thankful to God to have the opportunity to, again, work, uh, to, 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 to have a chance to relate to the work of some of these uh, musicians who are on this album. Uh, Anessa Amin, Tutmir, yeah. wonderful, uh, wonderful work. Not to mention Erdogan and then Chaz Rai, so. Yes, but we couldn't have, it wouldn't be out here if you hadn't done the work that needed to be done to bring it all together. And you were so focused and dedicated to getting it done. So that is truly commendable and appreciated. Well, the time is here and now. We, thank, we give thanks to God. We all got to play our role. And I just want to mention one one more thing about the Solstice program before we uh, we we kind of close out, and that is that there's a uh, a financial incentive to share this information, which is um, when when you really get into the quality of what you're receiving, forty nine dollars is is nothing. Just take a look around for um, meditation courses and things like that, and and that's the other thing we didn't mention uh, about our experience is that I, I don't think we've ever paid for a class, <laughs> you know, all all of these years, you know and counsel and, and all of that. So um, he's definitely set the model of, as a person that is, um, is, is clearly about the work and about helping others. So that's why you get this course for $49. But on top of that, uh, for every student that you refer, there's a free affiliate sign up, right? Where you can become an affiliate. And all that means is that this page, this beautiful page that you're looking at, uh, that was put together by um, Anensa Amen, another uh, ingenious society member. Uh, you know, your page will look exactly like this, only it'll be coded so that when somebody takes advantage of the opportunity, signs up in the class, then you will receive $9 of the, uh, of the $49. So really, you could take five, you know, furthest to five people and your class is free. And it's just a little incentive, you know, to really get the word out. The other thing about the solstice is that the solstice is not the entire event. As it says here, the four days of winter solstice are not the entirety of the sacred observance, but the beginning of 21 days of spiritual work dedicated to the renewal of your divinity. And he goes on to explain how uh, in the Chinese uh, Taoist calendar, which uh, is very powerful dealing with the energies of the earth, that uh, the two months, uh, these two months of the year uh, actually are the, are the a powerful yin force. And the yin, or what we call tefnut and kemet, is that energy that supports us going within. So it doesn't stop on the 24th of December. It's all, you know, through uh, past January 6th, the Day of Kings and on, uh, that you have the opportunity to etch your spirit with what it is that you want to accomplish in the coming year. So I see nothing but uh, thank yous and praises in the stream that I'm looking at. So uh, I appreciate that. And tomorrow night uh, on the final day of the solstice, that would be Saturday the 24th, we're going to have Shechem or Shechem back again at 8 p.m. And we're gonna be talking about solstice. We're gonna be talking in depth about meditation and so forth. So you definitely want to uh, make sure that you spread the word about this. Our mission is to uh, spread love and wisdom throughout the world, spread the beauty of our African culture. And um, there is one other thing I want to show you. Let me see if I can bring this up here. You know, the other thing that happens this time of year is, is we're, uh, we're bombarded with a bunch of um, propaganda stories, right? you know, particularly about Egypt and the, the, the Pharaoh, let my people go and all this kind of thing, you know, and, and as, as black people, as African people, you know, we have to recognize that this is part and parcel of, um, of white supremacy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because Kemet is, is ours to claim. And if you go to our website, osarsetpa.com, um, you'll see a recording of our previous session with Shechem Shechem. 
and some local uh, events that we have. But if you come all the way down to the bottom, right, there's a very powerful video that if you're not familiar with this, Here is Egypt, Cairo, and the Giza Plateau with three large pyramids, those of Khufu, Khafre, and Menkor. The Pyramid of Khufu was covered with white limestone, which is completely missing today. There are smaller pyramids called satellites, temples of which only ruins remain, and sanctuary tombs called mastabas, and below the monumental statue of the Sphinx and the Valley Temple. Inside the Great Pyramid, there are two corridors, tunnels, one chamber 30 meters underground, a room in the middle called the Queen's Chamber, an upper room called the King's Chamber, a large inclined gallery, and four shafts which cross the pyramid. But what is exceptional and out of the ordinary? It absolutely required a careful preliminary plan. The architecture of the pyramid was determined based on a very precise and detailed plan. Everything that was thought of from the start was carried out and scrupulously respected. To build a pyramid, you must choose the shape of the triangle. The question is, what triangle? This is a triangle. This one too. There is a choice from 230,000 triangles and 110 million possibilities to make a pyramid. But the Egyptians chose only one. The only one. The perfect one. According to their sacred principles, they laid a base that measures 440 cubits. Then they divided the base by pi, or 140 cubits. So they get into, they get into a lot of mathematics here, a lot of math. And um, I just want to urge you, if you haven't seen this, that you go and you buy this. Um, that's why I took the liberty to put some excerpts on the website. Um, you can order it right here. It's a powerful production. It's three hours long. Um, but one of the most powerful things, it shows you how the pyramids were made, but how they were constructed. They were not made by aliens that came from out of space or interdimensional you know, beings. And they were made by Africans, black people in the Nile Valley. And, um, you know, it won't give you the keys you're getting now as to what's the purpose of the pyramids. But uh, it will be a powerful way for you to uh, communicate, particularly to our children, because it shows and depicts us you know, not as olive skinned, you know, indeterminate uh, racial type, but as Africans. And this is, these are images that you want uh, your children to see. It also uh, shows you clearly the linkage between the pyramids that were constructed in ancient Egypt and other places around the world, of course, including in Mesoamerican culture. So you wanna go here and support uh, the artists that created this. They are based in France and um, they, will, they will send you a, a thumb drive with the movie on it. You can get the movie on YouTube for free, but you won't get the full uh, movie with the, uh, there's about 12 uh, uh, special features that are also made uh, available. So uh, it's a powerful thing. You can get that at osarsetpa.com, A-U-S-A-R-A-U-S-E-T-P-A.com. Uh, don't let your children watch the Ten Commandments, right? Nothing against the Christian religion, but you know, this movie is portraying, you know, falsehoods about your ancient Egyptian ancestors, right? There's no evidence at all that uh, any other people were enslaved. In fact, the excavations of the, the graves of the workers, which they have access to at the base of these pyramids, show that they were given the same burial rites. They were even given medical care and so forth. They were regular citizens of the, of the country. But we're made to believe that some, some people were, uh, you know, captivated and made to make bricks out of stone and, and, <laughs> build a structure that they had no history of ever building wherever they came from. So we need to get rid of that falsehood and get back into our African 
uh, spirituality. So thank you, Ordawat and then Shas Ra. It's wonderful to see you taking time out of your busy day, serving and nurturing people and family in your community. And Shekha Mamakaru, wonderful to see you as well. We appreciate your contribution. And Erdogan, we <clears throat> can I just uh, say a quick uh, an etch route to Erdoa Matera Reed in Chicago. As I look out my window at the four inches of snow that <laughs> we, we have here in our 20 degrees below zero uh, hometown of Chicago, I want to mm. just uh, make sure that I greet my queen mother and also a high Shekh Meher Hefner. I just have to say that it must have been really tough down south <laughs> for black people to go up there and live in Chicago, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, we're dealing with a, you know, just you know about ten degrees or something, and we're like all going like, ooh, <laughs> you've got twenty <laughs> below. But yes, I would like to say a natural out to Orwa Materi too, and a natural again to Orwa M to Huti Kamo and all that he's done, and my family Orwa Hamadu, Orwa Tu and Kamet. Just you know, we're all, all here to serve you who are listening online and if there's anything that we can do to help you here in the dc virginia maryland area please please don't hesitate to contact us we do have classes here as well that you can participate in online so you know thank you Orwa, again what about give give your um the address the Shepsu, Dwa to God Almighty, for bring us together. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Sing good with.
is a divine being, says the comedic religion. But the early part of man's life is dominated by the human faculties and limitations. The essential focus of the ancient Egyptian religion is then the transcendence of the human stage and the realization of the true and final state, the divine nature. Divinity is realized by adherence to divine laws, and it confers upon man access to divine or superhuman abilities, the elevation of her mental abilities and talents, and qualifies her to enter into a partnership with God. Meduna Ter, Volume 6, by Ra Um Nefer. Amen. Civilization. Divine. Unparalleled. 